Okay, this is the second part of chapter four. I hurried home after Maxie went into her building. I made sure to check before I rounded any corners and turned real wide along the sidewalks. I slept inside my house and breathed deeply, drawing the warm peppery aroma of Mama's chicken casserole into my lungs. How was your day, Mama asked, as I hung up my coat by the door and kicked off my shoes. She was sitting in the brown armchair beside the front windows, stitching buttons into one of Father's shirts. All right, I flopped down on the couch. I hadn't meant to lie, but I couldn't say the truth out loud. I propped my stocking feet up on Mama's cherry coffee table. Mama adjusted the shirt over her knees. She raised her one eyebrow and cleared her throat. I moved my feet to the carpet. In 10 minutes, I need you to set the table. I, I nodded and closed my eyes. Bucky's bruised up face floated in front of me. I sat up. I'll do it now. Mama had already spread her green tablecloth over the dining table. She even had two candles not lit for the centerpiece. I picked the silverware from the utensil draw and dumped it on the tablecloth. My hand shook as I got down four plates from the cabinet by the sink. I laid them out around the table. The glasses waited in the drying rack on the counter. I grabbed all four of them at once, but one popped out of my grip. It cracked against the counter edge, tumbled to the floor, and shattered. I knelt to pick up the pieces. Mama appeared in the kitchen doorway. Sam, don't touch that. Get out of there with no shoes on. Look where you're stepping. I stayed on my knees, staring at the broken glass. I couldn't stop it, Mama. I didn't know what to do. Baby, don't fret yourself over one glass. We've got others. Get your shoes and just sweep it up. My chest and stomach ached, but I still couldn't tell her. I swept up the glass while Mama pulled our dinner casserole out of the oven and put some rolls in to warm. Hello, Father called from the front door. He thumped around in the entryway, hanging his coat. I took my shoes back over there. Hi. Hi, Sam. Father smiled. Where's your brother? Stick's hook on the coat rack was empty. I shrugged. It was past our usual supper time. Had he heard about Bucky already? News like this traveled fast in the neighborhood. If he found out good, then I wouldn't have to be the one to tell him. Maybe I wouldn't have to say anything about it ever. Mama left the dinner to warm while Father and I washed up and we all waited for Stick. After half an hour, Stick hadn't come home yet. Mama was worried Stick over him. She didn't say anything, but she kept twisting her hands and looking out the front window. Finally, Father declared, let's eat. We had finished dinner and were clearing the table when the doorbell rang. Mama raced from the kitchen and flung open the door. Fred and Leon came inside. Can I get either of you anything, Mama said? Chicken casserole? Something to drink? No, thank you, Marjorie, Leon said. He faced Father. We stopped by to talk for a moment. Sorry to interrupt supper. No intrusion. We're finished, Father said. Sam was just about to start his homework. He gave me a pointed look. I rolled up the tablecloth and got my school bag. I spread my math homework out on the table and pretended to work on it as Mama cleared away the last of the supper dishes. It's Sharon Willis's boy, Clarence, Leon said. They took him into custody this afternoon. Father motioned them into the living room. Bucky? I know him. He used to be over here every day. He frowned. He's a good kid. They arrested him? Leon grimaced and lowered his voice, glancing over at me. They beat the living daylights out of him, Roland. For a while there, we weren't sure he'd even make it, but he's holding his own. Father sat in silence for a moment, maybe saying a prayer. He finally spoke. He's a tough kid. He'll make it. What's the charge? Two counts of assaulting a police officer and resisting arrest. My pencil skidded across the page. Father raised his head. Assault? Bucky? His skeptical tone matched my thoughts. I can't imagine him. It sounds like he just snapped, Leon continued, shaking his head. Maybe it has to do with his father. You never really get over a thing like that. At any rate, the kid attacked two police officers over on Bryant Street earlier this afternoon. That's not what happened, I blurted. Bucky didn't start that fight. The police did. Sometimes people act irrationally, Sam, father said, turning toward me. I stood up. But father, the police are lying. You don't know that, son. I realize Bucky is a friend of yours, but I do know I was there. I saw it happen. Father twisted in his seat to face me more fully. Mama set the casserole down with a thunk. Everyone stared at me. Then all of them started in at once. What are you talking about? What are you saying? What have I told you about hanging out in the street? I traced the edge of the wood tabletop with my pencil eraser. I was walking my friend Maxie home. She lives on Bryant Street, and Father frowned at my mention of that neighborhood. Sam, I told you a hundred times, it wasn't after dark I protested. It was still the middle of the afternoon. Anyway, Maxie and I saw Bucky. He was on his way back from work after, from making a delivery. He was hurrying, and he looked over his shoulder when someone called his name, but he didn't stop running. He didn't even see them. He bumped into them by accident. They started yelling at him and hitting him with their sticks, they drew nightsticks? Father's eyebrows dropped lower and lower. For heaven's sake, Roland, let the boy tell his story, Fred bellowed. I nodded. They had sticks. They talked to him, asked him his name and what he was running from. When he didn't answer all the questions, they started hitting him. Fred and Leon glanced at each other. Father stared at me. There were plenty of people around who can tell you the same. Father ran his hand over the top of his head. He turned to Leon. 
Are you telling me no one came forward with this, not one witness? First I've heard of it, Leon said. Father sighed. Why didn't anyone say anything? You know perfectly well why not, Roland, Leon said quietly. Father nodded, rubbing the back of his neck. Fred cleared his throat as if to say something, but sat back when Leon shook his head. There's something else we should discuss, Leon continued in a low voice. I strained to hear him. Leon glanced at me, then Mama. Though now may not be the best time. Sam, go finish your homework, Father said. I stood up and gathered my school things as slowly as possible. Those kids, the Black Panthers, they're down at the police station now, staging a protest, Leon said. We didn't know what the purpose was, but hearing Sam, all three men looked over at me. It seems they might have cause. I ducked around the corner into the hallway, but pressed up against the wall to listen. Roland, God, I don't know what to say here, Leon said. What is it, Leon? Fred's voice rang out loud and clear. Stephen is down there with them. A wave of tension swept over the stillness. The front door slammed. Fred's car started up in the driveway. I walked back to the living room, where Mama stood alone looking after the men. We waited in silence.